Latino friends every day seems like a big old project around here. And I have said for years, people want to know, Jay Morrell, how do you have all this energy? Where, where do you, uh, how do you do these things? And I say, and it is the truth, that sleep is my gift to myself. Yes and amen, I sleep a good eight hours every night. So thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Well, friends, can you believe it? This is, <laughs> finally, we have come to the days of the moving in and cooking. Also, we're going to be doing some cooking in this video, breaking in the new Mega Mama kitchen. Oh, yes, we are. And so you might have seen in the last video, I had an organize and decorate video. We did the drawer liners. I got those rolls from Amazon and Zion stayed up one evening and got those put in all the drawers and cabinets for me. I'll say most, about three quarters of them. And so those uh, just add a nice little touch, I think. And so that drawer in particular, it's just various odds and ends that I was hoping to have kind of spread out in there for easy access. We'll see though, we've got to move some things around. I wanted my big long drawer right by the stove to be uh, utensils I need for cooking for doing all the quick cooking on the stove. Um, spoons and spatulas and um, tongs and, and different things like that. Of course, I'm keeping a set of measure, measuring spoons right there. And yeah, I hadn't even uh, changed out of my pajamas yet, but I was trying to get a little bit going this morning before you know everyone found their way into the kitchen. And so yes, we have one, one broken whisk there. That's uh, Tobin's, he plays with that one. And so I'm going to work on trying to set up a bit of a baking spot. But again, it's going to take me like really being done moving in <laughs> and really cooking in this kitchen a lot, a lot, a lot um, to see the best way to really set everything up. So this is all theory so far, but I've got some different whisk and things in there. And then at this point, I'm still, yeah, figure, let's figure out what we're going to put. And that's a nice deep, I almost said dreep, <laughs> nice deep cabinets there. Oh, yes, on my foot. And there's a cabinet that I'm thinking we're going to put bowls in. Sorry, I was thinking we're going to add that to the sink. And I thought, no, J. Morrell, please don't tell me you're going to put that back in the drawer. <laughs> Those are uh, some baggy organizers I got. I was thinking that middle deep drawer is going to be my highly usable items that I'm using when I'm doing like a lot of big mega cooking and filming. Thanks again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. You know, I've shared with you before how important sleep is to this mega mama, to, uh, to all the people doing all the things in life. We must have our sleep to recharge us and help us do what we need to do every day. So I've had my Helix mattress here for about a month, and I will say that we are sleeping fantastic on it. We got the Helix Twilight mattress for for our king size bed. The Helix Twilight Lux mattress is designed with a firm feel top of bed with no sink. It's comfortable, yet it's solid under your body. It also features side sleeper pressure relief and balance support for the right amount of give and take. And I'm a side sleeper, so is Travis. So having a firm mattress with side sleeper support was important to us. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently they're shipped right to your door. Everybody's sleep needs are different, just like Travis and I and Helix knows that so they've made a sleep quiz which match your unique body type and sleep preferences to make the perfect mattress for you I took the sleep quiz and as I've shared based on my results helix matched me with the Twilight Lux mattress our Helix mattress is nice and firm. We definitely feel supported and it is super comfortable. As I say, going to bed at night is my favorite thing. Compared to our old mattress, it's amazing. I love my Helix and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Just click the link below in the description. Go to helixsleep.com forward slash jmorell 
for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep Mattress plus two free pillows. We got the pillows also and they are also amazing. With Helix Sleep Mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. There are also financing options and flexible payment plans. So again, go to helixsleep.com forward slash jmorell for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep Mattress plus two free pillows. Well, hello, it's another day and the 16 foot <laughs> long table stack of stuff didn't mysteriously disappear or put itself away. So this afternoon, I am back at it. And you've probably heard this a couple times now through my videos. Tell me if you heard this one or not. The whole week that I was finally free to start moving things in, we were just like, we were bad, bad sick. <laughs> bad, bad sick. Uh, hand, foot, and mouth disease. Yep, that made a visit to our house. It's only the second time that we have ever had it as a family. We had it the first time in 2018 and then I didn't get sick. You know, it's highly contagious. It goes around in daycare centers and such. And uh, we just happened to pick it up one summer. And so uh, about two weeks ago now, it was like, oh, it's been a couple years. I think this is what this is. I, I mean, we've been everywhere. We've done everything. Who knows like where we got it. But usually it, uh, let, me, let me give you a hand, foot, and mouth disease rundown now, by the way. Kids got it. Not only that, I got it. So, so many of these uh, videos that you have already seen, and especially by the time you get to this, like where I'm moving us in, like I've been sick as well. So, I feel normal today, that's what I wanna say. Again, praise the Lord and pass the chicken, like I'm feeling human. And uh, yesterday, I actually, I had a doctor's appointment out, I had to go out for the whole day. I'm definitely on the upswing now. Okay, wait, stop everything, the pig has had her baby. So, am I getting to this? I don't know, but I gotta go check in on some pigs. So yeah, um, that's how life goes. So skip ahead several hours. Gee, Jamara, why can't you get these things done? It became a pig midwifery afternoon. And uh, yeah, now it's definitely nighttime. And I am going to, I'm like, okay, forget it. At least we got a little bit unloaded in the morning. Uh, got, yeah, got some veggies from the garden too. Uh, I'm going to make a simple dinner. What's a simple dinner around here? Let's do a bunch of sloppy joes. And so that's exactly what I did. We brought up about 10 pounds of ground beef from the freezer. And I just did the quick cold water defrost method, just ran some water over the packages. I could not truly, you know, get it all defrosted. Um, but got that in the pan, got that started to cook. And now I am just wiping down my counters. I tell you, I am loving every single minute of cooking in these Lodge brand 17 inch cast iron skillets here. It's just, again, hopes and dreams. So yes, hopes and dreams. That's 10 pounds of meat there. And I'm just trying to cook that through. And then I will add in the, um, just kind of pretty standard sloppy joe ingredients now you can do ketchup or you can do tomato paste um usually i add in some mustard some people on tiktok want to argue with me about mustard you do mustard if you if you like mustard also onion powder garlic powder and brown sugar now if you're d doing more sugar free and the ladies who like to watch my videos who do trim healthy mama or some of those other eating plans or you know even keto or what have you just use there's a brand called swerve and it's brown sugar replacement substitute whatever you want to call it it's a natural sweetener and it has the brown sugar flavor but it's not actual like granny granulated sugar and, and molasses. You can use that if you would like and then just use whatever normal bread substitutions that you would like. And so this evening for my family, look at that meat masher. One of you sent that to me. It is still in great use. I've gotten a lot of questions too on where to get one of the meat mashers. Of course, I'll have my Amazon uh, linked for you down below, but you, I'm even hearing you can get them at Dollar Tree now. So I know Walmart has them as well. Anyway, I'm just washing down my little, um, my pot there from earlier and also washing down. Now we got this cute little, you might see it on the counter there behind me. It looks like a little white trash can. It's supposed to be like a countertop compost. I'm using that for chicken scraps. And so far, I mean, as long as we don't get behind and dump in it. So a little bit now, 
we've been dumping that once or twice a day and uh, but of course I haven't been doing like mega mega cooking you know <laughs> this 10 pounds of uh, sloppy joes I'm making I mean that's a lot we do actually get two dinners and two lunches out of that but whenever I'm doing you know a lot of veggie prep and a lot of freezer meals and such I'll end up with a nice uh, metal scrap bowl there of scraps for the chickens so for our daily use though the cute little countertop compost bucket is working for us okay and now I'm draining my meat lots of folks have asked me if those pans are heavy yes they are I do have a metal bowl underneath my big colander there and I am draining the grease that way now this is my um, homegrown you know pure and holy grass-fed cow I bought had bought half a cow I don't know was it six months ago or so um, so this is some of the ground beef that is left from that and so it doesn't have a ton of fat in it uh, but I did drain it anyway it's probably like 90 10 uh, but anyway, there's some of the seasonings. Now again, if I did not have to um, do pig midwifery for several hours, I could have also, you know, sauteed some onions and some oil, maybe even some peppers. We could have even done some shaved carrots. I mean, you can get fancy fancy with it. Uh, but yeah, I delivered pigs. That was my big accomplishment. <laughs> so, and I'm just with the regular old brown sugar. I had maybe a quarter of a bag left from holiday baking and I just went ahead and put that in there as well. I was trying to do you know a lot a lot of sloppy joes as easy as possible and um, if I don't do like just general mustard I put a little um, ground mustard in there and you can see I'm just doing regular old ketchup not opening the can of tomato paste but you can do that as well and now um, in my TikTok video of this recipe several ladies are telling me that they usually put like um, navy beans in their sloppy joes. I haven't heard of that in, until recently. Uh, there I am filming my TikTok too. That's <laughs> multitasking mama. Yes and amen. But I have heard of, you know, several moms who use lentils as a meat replacement or help to stretch their uh, meat-based meals. But there's another, another thought for you to try if you would like. And so there we go. All the sloppy joes cooked all up for us. And so plate of sloppy joe so that is sitting on a trivet, watermelon, bread, we've got three different types of rolls there, and it's just a simple dinner, and yes, there is a fly on the watermelon rind, haha, ha, welcome to country life. Um, so that what is what was left after our first meal, and again, we did end up getting another dinner and two lunches out of that. People were very excited the first time I ate it, and then, you know, interest might wane by the, by the, um, time we were having it for lunch for a fourth time there might be people like getting some different lunch options and that's fine but we did spread it out over a couple meals and now I am taking um, some time to clean the stove off and scrub out my pan and so this uh, meal prep quick washing station sink has been working wonderful for me I've been using it um, as I'm cooking more and more in the kitchen for the different pans pots or pans that um, I just want to go ahead and get washed and then the other sink by the window is more of like our family sink and so cups and plates and you know different family dishes that accumulate when you have 11 people living here all day every day <laughs> that's what the um, happens in the other sink but they are nice and deep sinks so that is certainly helpful I'm washing out my little grease pot there I had scraped the grease that was gathered out of it wash it off my nice little meat masher and we're gonna also wash the colander there and you may see in the background look what has appeared watermelon and bananas so I had some things for a grocery pickup order and we just throw in some watermelons while they're still available in my area um, along with a meal is helpful and then also we we always need bananas just spraying out my sink it's all new little routines right I've been hanging my little wash rags that I feel like I can use a time or two from the sinks and I'm going ahead and wiping out that sink as well I will say these dishwashers are fantastic I mean they make like no noise whatsoever so that is nice and I'm taking my stainless steel wipes and just wiping everything down that evening so this is an example of 
moving into the kitchen but yet there's so much more to move into this kitchen, <laughs> but at least I can use it. In the meantime, you may see I've got some of my chicken sister pictures sitting and some cutting boards as well. We're waiting to do major things with the windowsills until I get those I have ordered. Uh, we'll be in here later September or early October, but I'm just kind of set one or two things there once in a while, polishing down the, the Big Bertha refrigerator. Maybe that'll be her name. I have decided we're going to call the stove the glory stove <laughs> because the stove, yes, the stove is glorious. The refrigerator, I mean, we're jamming stuff in it. It's definitely not going to be this video that we get to organize it. It's going to probably take like its own dedicated video. Uh, but there we are. This is the, the clean kitchen at night. Everything is clean for the most part. Oh, besides, oh no, besides that mess, uh, which hey now that's going to be yet another day but uh we we did the baby pig thing we did it and that was worth it so now here it is the next morning and guess what gotta eat so i am chopping up some cabbage because i was going to do some cabbage and eggs and i got that some butter going in the pan and i just went ahead and did a whole head of cabbage uh there's only like two of us in the house on this day that would have eaten buttered cabbage and so well actually I mean Tobin would eat a little bit but you know not like a noticeable amount so that'll be for breakfast and then some for lunch or to go along with another meal so this is a little bit of you know uh, ma mama taking care of herself time and I know that cutting board moving is going to bother a bunch of you but we, we were okay <laughs> I did find my uh, little homemade hot pads there now I got another pan out I'm doing some eggs in that one Kids were eating different things on this morning. I've had a few of them since this time who have been learning to use the gas stove, the older ones, but on this day they were doing like toaster pancakes and uh, I was just doing, there you go, some cabbage and some eggs for mama and let myself sit and eat and chew and digest. <laughs> Another gift to myself. Okay, is this it? Could it be? Oh, finally. It is fun. Organizing is fun. It is also just overwhelming looking at the big piles of stuff. So my first goal was like to get all the measuring cups. And also you can see out the windows out the front. You see Travis and the kids like are doing so many things outside. <laughs> they are cleaning up and moving things and organizing and uh just working, working on the front yard of the house there. Oh, and I remember what they were doing. They were getting things ready because the pod pickup was going to happen also. And Travis had to move vehicles and get things ready for that as well. So I'm trying to put things on the island to start that I know I want over near me when I'm cooking on that big island for the most part. Now, those are some of my four jars canning lids and the cabinet there that I am was just putting those in is a cabinet that I was putting my pressure canners in and so these are items that you know there's going to be days and weeks where those items are just like out every day but they're not out every day right now and so I need to have a home for them so that's that's where I had put them and we had kids coming in and saying hello and saying goodbye and hey mama's filming and go run and play <laughs> and there's some more of my organizers I was trying to set those out so that I would use them and I wanted to organize my measuring cups and get a bunch of them I mean you know from years of watching my videos I'm always like hunting and digging and looking for the cups that I need also, I went ahead and made that second smaller drawer into a mixer drawer. So I've got two hand mixers and their attachments in that drawer, but that's my silver Cuisinart mixer that I use more often. And uh, I just, it had, it had the original sticker on it for some reason. So I got that off and I just really wiped that down well before I put that up. And this is still Mama talking to kids. It'll be part of the show out the windows now. Oh, I also put my immersion blender in there. And so here I'm just going through and thinking what other items I want in that top little baking drawer.
And so now I'm just trying to organize my like measuring cups together. Um, at this point, I was thinking I could keep some of them in that top little drawer. We will see how that works out. But I feel like I just have to, you know, touch things and move them and push them around and find out where they should go. But that's all my bag holders that are going to go in my main middle drawer there that we're going to use for so many things. And then I'm also working on thrift store boxes. So like little odds and ends that can go, that can be donated. I'm putting them in that little green box there, finally. And see now, what did I learn? Well, no, <laughs> can't, can't open that drawer very well with those cups in there. Oh, and now it's stuck, yeah. Sorry, sorry past Jamarelle, future Jamarelle is sorry. That is always frustrating. <laughs> and now I'm going back to the door to talk to some kids some more. And now I'm back. If only I really could go that fast. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, didn't work in that drawer. What I wanted was to put um, like some of the mixing cups or measuring cups, sorry, in um, the smaller drawer and they just wouldn't fit. And so I'm like, okay, well, I need them all in one spot anyway. So I'm going to put them in my deep middle drawer. Um, that will just have to be it. But I must go through the <laughs> the process, like working a puzzle, right? How will we fit all this in here? How is it going to work? Okay, we're, we're finding hope. So now I'm going to look for... Um, where I can put those little shredders and those rolling pins. I put those in the bottom drawer for now. And I take those other items over to my corner cabinet. So many of you have suggested I organize that corner cabinet with Lazy Susans. And I do have a few of those ordered, but I didn't do that until after I had already recorded this day. So this is us again, first try, trying to make some sense of it and get those in there but I definitely like that lazy Susan idea and I think that will work well yeah I'm just looking around and I think I'm gonna end up putting my cutting board in my same middle drawer again where I'm gonna be filming and where I think I'm just gonna live my whole life and so now I want to go to the tip top of those cabinets and see what I can work out over there and I have my platters and such I'm gonna put at the top of the corner cabinet for now. And so here, many of you have suggested I use the little drawer by the stove for hot pads. It didn't also fit my oven mitts. So for now, I'm doing that top middle drawer for both oven mitts and hot pads. But maybe as I find more and unpack more, I just don't have that many. I think I've got like five of the homemade kid ones that I've been using and then two sets of oven mitts that look like they need to go be with Jesus. So <laughs> what I have at this moment is fitting in that top drawer pretty well. And then I did slide, work on sliding my baking pans um, into the smaller cabinet to the right of the stove. There were, yeah, yeah, it's, it's working. It's amazing. Now we got to work on the pan storage a little more. So I had, I was thinking, okay, originally I had unloaded my pots into the smaller cabinet and I thought my pan Hands, um, would fit the larger cabinet but uh, really I just I didn't have as many pans as I thought I had so I was able to get both pots and pans in that double cabinet for now and I need a whole cabinet for all of my 10 by 15 and 9 by 13 um, glass oven safe freezer safe casserole dishes and so I just start lining those all up in there so that that is working itself out. Our little saga that you'll watch through the next couple videos is with the ice maker. There's a towel under it because it's leaking but it's working fantastic and <laughs> if I could give Travis a minute his plan is he's going to take it all apart and uh, see if he can get it fixed before you know unfortunately getting a new one. We'll see what's happening with that. I'll be sure to update you and here I am just doing my quick little washout. I had a couple 9 by 13s that just, you know, were looking, looking funky. So I went ahead and just rinsed them out. Had, you know, like a dead moth or some dust or other, <laughs> other things on them. And so, again, this sink is understanding its assignment. So I don't have to 
wash these extra things over top of family dishes, I have a, another place to work and get things done. So, so far I'm not mad about having two sinks. And I absolutely love, you all let me know if you like it, my chicken picture that's uh, <laughs> to the right of the stove there. Um, she just, oh, she makes my heart happy every time I look at her. Um, so I did have it leaning there and then Travis got the, one of the little sticky adhesive things that can go on tile and come off and not damage it. There's names for it command hooks maybe something like that anyway he got that to hang up my chicken pictures or if I want to hang up anything on the tile so that is fun and that has been working well I am putting my pan back on the stove there so many towels so many towels but so many reasons right cleaning out my sink again and now I just wanted to clean off my salt and pepper shaker lids so that's what I'm doing there Alrighty, so now I am just bringing things from the table that I think will live in this island or obviously somewhere in these cabinets. And so instead of getting so overwhelmed standing at the 16 foot table, I am bringing batches over to work through. And I am thinking that the um, top drawer is going to be where I put my metal bowls. I have some other uh, mixing bowls and decorative silver uh, serving bowls that for now are going in the drawer underneath. I will show you all inside of all these drawers uh, once we get done with them here. But this is me working through them, working, working out my systems here. I have all those lids that go to the 10 by 15 oven safe, freezer safe uh, Pyrex. I also have some red lids that go to those deep Rubbermaid storage containers that I've used for years. Um, and I have some different little funnels there I'm putting away. I have some, some folks who really like using those like microwave egg poachers or omelet makers. So we have a little collection of those. Those come in handy. So I'm looking for a little place for them. And now I'm working on filling some boxes for the thrift store. I know it's sad, but we have to out with the old and with the new. Those griddles still work, but I did get two fresh griddles for the kitchen. And that's my Pioneer Woman Silverware Organizer. I think I've had that since the Forest House, so I may have had it seven years now. It still works. It's It's been well loved, well used, and I also put some of my older muffin tins in there because I've really been using more of the silicone muffins, muffin um, holders the last couple years, and then some odd and end measuring cups, and uh, just just different things, different things here. Ice cube trays. Okay, so I am really uh, <laughs> not feeling discouraged. I'm just tired by this point. I mean, you know, it's been a long day. Um, and even the stuff you don't see in the video. So I thought, okay, I can do two more hours and then I can be done. <laughs> so I set my timer for two more hours, got myself 40 more ounces of water, and I thought, let's just, let's push for this and be done for the day. So what I'm working on there is my idea for this year, uh, homeschool-wise, is that we would pack lunches the day before now, you know, no, it's not necessary to pack lunches if you homeschool, if you're a longtime homeschooler, if you're a new homeschooler. Um, at least in my going on 18 years of experience, lunch can quickly become like an hour event. Um, even when um, we're eating leftovers and stuff. Now, we can listen to an audiobook during lunch. Um, I can read to the kids during lunch, but you know, sometimes like, I like to eat and chew too. Um, and yes, there are times we can get it done in 30 minutes, but I just think like, it's a good natural breaking point and uh, lunch takes a while. So in theory, I could be wrong. <laughs> But I do have kids who really enjoy, like, you know, packing their lunches for field trips and stuff. I'm thinking even if it's, you know, leftovers and such, if everyone, again, in theory, or maybe it's going to be mama, I don't know. <laughs> but again, this is what I'm trying. If we can pack lunches the night before, then we can pull them, like everyone can pull them out and 
if I'm in the middle, like it doesn't have to feel like such a hard break. And I feel like because I'm talking and how we've done it different years. So other ways, other systems we have tried is I have a different kid assigned every day to just, okay, while everyone else is working, they get a longer time on that day to go and pull lunch plates together and like serve little lunch plates while we're working. There's certainly many, many times that I go and I make lunch plates and I serve lunch lunch plates. But again, just will this streamline in a little more? I have no idea. <laughs> so it's okay. We make our own schedule. Maybe we're going to still have, you know, the hour lunch break or the 30 minute lunch break. But my, my experiment is, oh yeah, that's a little grape chopper. Uh, we do cut Tobin's grapes for him. Uh, but that little chopper, like Amazon had me. And I also got those little metal panda plates. Those look cute for the younger kids. Making lunch the night before, getting it out at some point mid homeschool time. It saves, it would save me time or it would save another family member from being assigned to help in with lunch, or it would save everybody stopping and doing different lunches. My dream in my head right now, you know, homeschool mom, new year, new dreams, <laughs> is that my dream is we'll have lunch packed and ready and kind of midway, someone can pull the lunches out and hand them out or each kid can go get their own lunch and then we can give us an easier transition. We like to have the first half of our homeschool time traditionally has been our book work, our table work that I call it. Uh, and then our last half is our read alouds. And we do get a lot of like history and science and literature and things done during that time. But also for me, so I'm not stopping and making my lunch like, hey, my lunch is ready to go as well. Uh, and we can just kind of keep on rolling. So anyway, we, we shall see. So I got these different little uh, lunchbox sets on Amazon, and I also got some of like the little salad bowls, has the utensils, and so I'm thinking that once we at least try out this routine, this is what the drawer looks like. But now, if this truly works, and you see I got like the little boys, <laughs> the cute little boxes there, um, and the kids love like sandwich cutters and using the little cupcake holders and stuff, uh, put different different little fruit and things in. Um, I also got like, you know, the little eyes that look like little toothpicks and stuff. Trying to be a lunch mom, I guess, huh? <laughs> um, but my thinking is, well, but once we get to like using these, like, you know, if they're washed out and reused in the evening, they'll live in the refrigerator. So they won't live in this drawer. But again, this is something like it's yet to be seen. This is, I even got one for Tobin. He loves trucks already. Where does he get that? He goes around making all the little truck noises. Um, there we go. So at, at least give us a good base to work from. I mean, obviously, if kids are still hungry, I get that question on TikTok a lot. Like, you know, well, that doesn't look like enough. And what if they're still hungry? Well, hi, nice to meet you. If they're still hungry, there's 50 bananas here or there's 10 pounds of oranges. Um, there's, there's food. No one's hungry. There's, there's other things to get. Don't worry. But this at least gives us something to work with. So that's my try. That's my year 18 homeschool mama try. Maybe that will work well for us. I have another friend who her blog used to be called mom delights online and she was a homeschool mom of 15. And years ago, I remember she had her kids pack like a brown bag lunch every evening. And that way during their school day, no one had to stop uh, to even heat up leftovers in the middle of the day. Everyone had their lunches and they could continue on with their projects and such. Kept the flow going. So this is me in deep thought, deep thought. So yes, uh, this is some back up forks and spoons that I had stashed in my corner cabinet in the baby kitchen. And I thought, as always, where did all those forks and spoons go? So I was just taking some time to unwrap those and they were going to be washed first. And so here we are again, picking through the table. I mean, look, we are making progress. We sure are. And there's definitely like some trash on the table, um, some other organizing things that I won't get to in this video, but definitely like some Instant Pot items and such that 
that need washed before they're put away. They were washed, but like if you see to the left, there's this little pot in pot instant pot set and the top lid just had a lot of dust on it. Um, because I just felt like I didn't have room for that for a while. Anyway, I'm working on putting my waffle makers into a drawer on the other side of the island. I'm also going to take that popcorn maker there and give that its own drawer. Now I'm working on lids that, uh, there's lids that I donate and then there's lids that I know I have for containers now. I'm also working on another donation box there. And honestly, I should not have donated my mandolin slicer, <laughs> but I was I was feeling pretty uh pretty brutal there with the donations on that evening. I'm thinking, oh, you need that, you use that. So, <laughs> oh well, oh well, oh well. But I do have some of my harvest right freeze dryer trays up here that needed to go downstairs to the freeze dryer kitchen. And now it is the next morning and we got the big pioneer woman cup of coffee and now this was 10 pounds of Jimmy Dean sausage yay from sharp shopper I think this was 3.99 a roll you know I can find it there from 2.99 to 3.99 and it was yep yep got it got a new head wrap and everything we are just ready to go and I'm getting out my pans there but I'm just doing the quick cold water defrost method on the sausage uh, Liam when he had seen those pans he said oh they're new gravy pans and so that inspired me to uh, definitely do sausage gravy in the pans for everybody and I figured it would be two pans full uh, my quandary on this morning was we were out of milk now I do have some shelf stable milk and of course I have evaporated milk mama's brain was not firing on all cylinders I was also getting used to using my gas stove. So whenever you're doing any kind of gravy, um, I mean, you can use water. If you don't have anything else, any kind of liquid will work. I mean, you could use um, unsweetened almond milk. You can use oat milk. Again, you can use water. Uh, you can also use broth. And so in that kitchen, I did have some boxes of broth already. And that's what I went ahead and used. And I'm also recording a TikTok there. Um, don't worry, I do clean my phone with a bleach wipe when I'm done. But I'm getting the sausage going, and my plan in my quick thinking is I'm going to use broth. I don't think that's a huge deal, but again, um, different things on TikTok are a big deal. And my video of me here making this sausage with beef broth as of recording this voiceover almost has a million views <laughs> the main reason though is oh my goodness you can't make gravy out of broth well i mean yeah you can so work with what you have then that's always my heart in sharing all of this is work with what you have so so we got the oven light turned on we got the oven preheating now we're going to get these biscuits going and so i just had uh, quickly ordered some biscuits in my walmart grocery order but once we're in here, we can make a bunch of pre-made, homemade biscuits for the freezer and uh, have them ready to go when we need them. But I am inhaling coffee. And really, what I need to be doing is absolutely not do any cooking and just continue to work on getting moved into this kitchen. But um, I also want to cook, and I also like to cook, and I love to cook for my family. And uh, here we go. So, um, uh, what? Yeah, so both ovens ice cold. I was so sad. I was scared at the moment that, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so I learned with my oven that morning for each oven, there's actually two dials. So one dial I pick out, um, you know, high bake, low bake, broil. And then on the other dial, I pick 
the actual temperature and both have to be selected. So I didn't read it in the manual. I learned it from experience, <laughs> but it was working after that. So, and I still keep checking on it though, but we're good, we're good. And now I'm just going through and cooking up the sausage. Yay, yay, yay. It's okay, J. Morrell. It all works out. I'm still worrying at that point, but I'm also feeling that it's heating up. So it's okay. I would have been sad if my stove wasn't working because now that I'm starting to use it. And I'm still going back and forth and I'm still going back and forth fiddling with this, the oven but it really does all work out I just had to keep reassuring myself that yes heat is coming and then the ovens are convection ovens um, and like you know then I heard the fans kick on from that and all all was all was good in the house just had to work through it and drink a lot of coffee and there we are proof proof that it's working the top ones are doing well and I don't know if I had explained this yet. Um, you may hear me say this 10 times. Here we go, here's the first time. Um, I went with convection ovens with a gas range because, and you might have gas ovens and they work perfect. I can only go by experiences that other food creators that I know have had. So some of those friends who have had these stoves, and it's not just Z-Line, um, it's the, um, a very expensive French brand and um, the brands that are out there that are making these lovely stoves either the 48 inch or the 60 um, have either had trouble with their gas ovens heating thoroughly and completely or um, one or both of the gas ovens have just stopped working and I have heard from some different friends that the way that they went, what ended up working best for them was the gas on the top and the and the electric convection underneath. But we'll see how that works out. But this was my my first uh, oh oh no my oven's not working <laughs> thought. But no, it's just me. I didn't know how to work it. And that's just like you no, know, I've been babying the quartz countertops, and I've got so many great comments. In my last decorating and organizing video, one comment in particular was from a viewer who said she's a professional kitchen designer for 13 years and she has never, ever, ever had quartz crack or have any trouble. She wouldn't even worry with it potentially with something like a toaster. But I'm just being, you know, trying to be extra careful here and using cutting boards and um, different little heat protectors under countertop appliances. So this was Amelia's fun. She wanted to do, we had one single biscuit that would not fit on the pan and she wanted to bake that in the little cast iron. So we did that for fun. And now I'm adding in the flour. Now, I know you're supposed to brown the flour first. Okay, okay, but I still have my heat on. I'm still cooking this. It all works out in the end. Um, this is, <laughs> this is a mama cooking, okay? So I do go ahead and add in my flour and add in my liquid and continue to cook it on the stove top. Now I'm also add in um, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And everybody ate it and no one said there's broth in this and not milk. Again, it all worked out. So this is what mama cooked up and we did get several breakfasts out of this because I'm always of the mind of, I don't want to just cook for one meal. If I'm cooking, like I already one meal is a lot. <laughs> so if I'm doing, you know, two pounds or three pounds of meat, well, I might as well just do 10 pounds of meat and uh, get several breakfasts out of it. And if we have some left, then I can freeze that for another biscuits and gravy meal in the future.
and really based on the amount of liquid that you add I mean you can make as little or as much gravy as you want and now at this point I'm just going to work on combining both pans together there's the the cute little single biscuit there's the other biscuit starting to come out now I'm getting ready to put another tray up there go now making up plates of biscuits and gravy for breakfast and I was scarfing it down so there's that <laughs> And so now after breakfast, I'm taking all that is left and prepped ahead for other meals and getting that put away in the refrigerator. I'm also bagging up the left leftover biscuits. Woo! And then just knocked all the little cutting boards down. <laughs> That's okay. They'll stay there and like it here in a minute. And that worked out well. I was messing with maybe keeping it behind the stove. I'd ended up not liking that. Uh, but I don't know random roll of plastic wrap that I had and it was starting to fight me, but that's okay We were gonna persevere there had to use scissors with it uh, But yay putting leftovers in the refrigerator Advancements in life. Oh, you'll probably also see uh, behind our double trash cans there I had Travis put more of that pressed metal looking backsplash that we had in the other kitchen He went and bought more you can find that at Lowe's and Home Depot also and I just thought that would be nice behind the um, trash cans there and so far it has been working well. I'm just wiping down the countertops. Lots of folks have asked me how we keep them clean. We just end up wiping them down probably twice a day, sometimes three times, but they're beautiful, they're fantastic. I'm not mad about them, but I do take some time wiping everything down. But look, I can even wipe down the microwave now easily. Yay, short mom microwave. And then once we get everything settled from actually using this wonderful kitchen this morning, then we'll get back to, I don't know, is it day three? Is it day four of trying to, you know, get the rest of the things uh, moved in? Now, this is not even um, the pantry items. There are some pantry items on the table, but in this video, I'm really focusing on uh, the the bowls and the um, the pots and the pans and all those other things. And so now I'm making a pile of things that I feel like need a good wash before I put them away. And I'm also continuing to make a pile of, um, or fill another box for the thrift store. And now that is a Lazy Susan that I already have, but it needed washed off as well. And so I take a lot of my like breast milk storage bags and different little breast pumps and again, may not live here forever, but I'm putting them up there for now. We shall see. I mean, they had been in my bedroom, so. I'm 
also going back and forth with um, playing K-Love or playing worship music on the computer there. Still getting that set up, getting my podcast on it. And so with everything, I'm either putting it where I already know it goes, putting it in a pile to wash, or putting it in my thrift store boxes. Everything going on that side of the island there is going to be washed. So it took a few days and just the, you know, the mess was so deep and so wide, uh, <laughs> but I do feel like things are getting hopeful here. So it's, a, I still have one stack at the end that's starting for the next project, which is going to be pantry items and such. Um, but things are either going to be washed. I just, I wanted to find the table after several days. So they're going to be washed and put away or they're being donated or they are waiting at the end there for next project. Uh, we were going to work on coming up, bringing all the little food odds and end items, uh, non-perishable items that were in the baby kitchen and like on top of the refrigerator and such. Again, you'll, you'll see those here soon. So now I'm just spraying down the table. So it's nice, you know, we either have the island or the table to eat from. So during these days that the table was covered with all these other kitchen items that needed to be cleaned and put away, we use the island a lot. But there we go, three quarters of a table at least. And then the awaiting stack. And now over here, all the items that I want to wash. Some items I had got at the thrift store and just sat. Other items were waiting on the floor, like part of the floor overflow in um, my dining room area from projects and things. Just not having room. And so that's a bunch of my instant pot accessories there that I'm going to wash. And I am going around now and putting uh, just some other additional towels and things. I wanted to rework those drawers a little bit. I decided the middle drawer would be for kitchen towels and the bottom drawer would be for washcloths. But then I also, I also got rid of a stack of towels. So here we are still uh, moving around the stained glass windows in different places. That is not official yet. And I don't know that, yes, see I moved that window. I'm gonna move things around here. If I move that big circle window, yay, just like that. <laughs> um, it's, uh, we're playing a game of musical windows, but I wanted to see about putting some of my bigger canisters in that window. And um, will it work? I have to, I have to wash things. Um, but I'm just seeing size wise, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll put things there. You can let me know what you think. We're still, still working through things. I'm just spreading some towels out and I'm also got, you know, kids who need snacks. I'm starting to hear those rumbling. So I am doing some large family style peanut butter graham crackers.
and then kids are in the kitchen and coming around to use the microwave and such for lunch and I'm giving giving direction and talking about life <laughs> talking about the microwave talking about plans and hopes and dreams and also washing everything off so another question I've received a bunch is where will I set things when I'm hand washing things in the sink and so there is all the island behind me and there is about a foot on either side you know I won't always be washing this many items by hand even whenever I do big mega like you know 40 meals at one time type events it's not going to be necessarily you know all of these particular items so I have towels laid out and I'm able to reach and put things behind or just walk around the corner there it all works out now I am scrubbing scrubbing out my gravy pan I also have somebody taking a turn and sweeping the kitchen and so here I've just been given directions on sweeping because it's a big space. Oh, and Daniel is loving <laughs> using the little vacuum. Uh, but I've been telling the kids about how we're going to have to get under the stove and under the refrigerator. And then that little vacuum that sadly we can't find the charger for now. But I'm hoping that, you know, and all are moving around and like we're doing a whole house deep cleaning and organizing as well that we'll be able to find it. Uh, but he really enjoyed it. <laughs> using that little vacuum too and so yeah you're just seeing mama command center there uh but anyway i'm washing off this lodge griddle i've had for a long time i have not been able to use it at this house i honestly like don't do this but i used to use that on um my flat top stove because that's what i had at the farmhouse and uh i mean it worked well i did end up of course cracking i cracked that stove when i had pans up high and one fell on it so that definitely wasn't safe just in general um, and I also cracked my flat top at the, at the forest house not with that griddle but the griddle will be much better on the gas top stove and now I am using the bread pans cleaning the bread pans I should say we're not using them yet but I am scrubbing them out scrubbing off my spatula at that point I'm like yeah just some of these little dishes I'm doing them over here as well Now I am washing off that Lazy Susan. I used to have that in the middle of the table. And so we are, we are making our stacks. Things are working out. So we're getting through it. I had a lot of glass jars to watch and so we're getting through it. I had a lot of glass jars to wash and my big um, kombucha gallon jar and some different lids there. Of course different bowls and 
wire racks and things that yeah now we're just doing like a little slide behind me so here you go this is this is where I'll put the dishes <laughs> whenever I am using this to like wash a lot so now I am working on washing out these big glass containers now I did get those at Walmart and I do have another large one and that's what I do currently have my kombucha in um, that's over on top of my dryer I might actually move that in here to the top of my refrigerator uh, but I'm washing out those different containers and and again we'll just see I mean things have to get in here and then we'll live with it and we'll spin it and we'll see what works it's like the the whole thought process with the kitchen and the design and where things are gonna go I can only or and I could only go so deep with it and then my brain kind of just shut off a little bit because it's also very overwhelming and I have another friend doing a kitchen right now and she's like oh my goodness I did not realize this would be so overwhelming um, and yeah it is it's just overwhelming and a whole lot of choices at one time and my big thought process was well if we have the space and um, you know ha are using the space the the best way that I can figure out um, it's definitely gonna be a lot more room than my baby kitchen and a lot more functional for me in feeding my family and all of those good things So like you know, Mama's been working real hard to go watch, washing all this stuff. For dinner tonight, I'm not cooking on the glory stove. No, I'm not. I think that's what I'm gonna call it. That's that's the official name. I think I'm gonna call it the glory stove because it's glorious and it makes my heart all kinds of happy. Anyway, all this stuff is kind of air drying a little bit. I'll wipe it down with a towel here shortly, but I'm gonna go lay down for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna dry this stuff and put it away and then we're, we're cooking the fire outside tonight. We're going to do the hot dogs. On, we're going to roast hot dogs. That's it. And do s'mores, but we call them smos from, uh, at some point, Buzz Lightyear said that. Hot smos. Didn't he say, or, sh or schmoes? Yeah. Something. Anyway, okay. Just telling you, showing you, Mama's taking a rest now. Next thing you'll see, though, will be me running around putting all this stuff away. And here we are. We are back. I just had to lay down a little bit, read my book for a little bit. So just sharing that so you see that I do. I take rest also. Definitely. Moms need their rest here and there when they can get them. I was trying to use my can opener there to open my big thing of uh, Bush's baked beans. I decided to do those on the stove top to go along with our campfire hot dogs and um, smos <laughs> as we we jokingly still call them thanks buzz um, my nice can opener that a viewer sent me that um, just opens it like opens the lid safely I can't think of what else they're called right now but I guess it's the way all can openers are now welcome to the world Jay Morrell um, that one was not opening my big one but my other one that I had bought the uh, the dangerous kind that opened my big can and so now while those beans are going I am just getting the um, the glassware that maybe for the window getting that wiped off I just kind of feel like well if I have nice deep window sills I don't know I could use those <laughs> I could use those for kitchen things also I definitely want to put a bunch of plants in some but we're not there yet So there we go. There they are, at least sitting there clean, and we, we'll see how they talk to us. 
Now I'm stirring the beans. And you can use the, uh, the Swerve brown sugar also to make baked beans without uh, regular old molasses or brown sugar in them if you would like. I just like the Swerve brown sugar for many things. And again, I'm, I'm still sad that I'm out, but I need to order some more. And I'm not sure where those water pitchers are gonna go, but I am adding some more platters there that are gonna go up in my platter stack and putting away some more baking pans. That's still working out. Now I'm gonna dry some items. It's my little cast iron griddle there. Now I'm working on getting what additional items I can in my deep drawers. I think that my Mega Mama bowl is just going to sit out. I think that'll be okay. I just think I'll end up using it a whole lot here and no, no point to put it away. We got, you might see Tobin's little head at the end. <laughs> he is there eating some bananas. Mama is given direction as a mama will do. And now I don't, I'm, I don't think I'm married to this either. I'm putting my big things of foil and um, plastic wrap in the round cabinet there, but we'll see. And this is the, I think, the spice cabinet, although they have not moved over yet. So far, bowls, and there you go. Everything wipes off these cabinets. So, so far, I like having white cabinets because when there's a spill or when there's something on it, I see it and it can be quickly wiped. And then here we go, you know, from the last video, the, the cups have found their home. Not much has changed since then. I'm still looking for my gray straw for my gray cup. Hopefully that comes about. Okay, so then in here I have Instant Pot, electric pressure cooker, Instant Pot accessories, some extra inner pots. There's the tea drawer. The tea drawer has still been working out a little disheveled there but overall then the silverware drawer and then the slow cookers and so this is kind of like the lunch drawer you know these are going to be out a lot there's going to be times where two or three of them are out at least one of them um, so anyway touring the cabinets the lunch drawer And then the baking drawer. And then my, you know, immediate need item drawer is what I'm thinking of with that. And then I have some plastic containers in there. And then two colanders and my metal bowls. And then some more plasticware and glass bowls, storage things. And then here we have the haphazard baking drawer. And then the mixer drawer. And noth nothing much down there. Just two little, basically, kid rolling pans, pins there. That's how things are looking right now. And the table is still... I put a, a little basket from Aldi in the middle. Yes, yes, it's glorious. It's not a whole table, but again, three quarters of a table. 
and things to come right there that's for sure oh it's it's looking scary inside it definitely needs some good organization but uh oh 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 are we looking oh my oh my well maybe not <laughs> Thank you again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Click on the link in the description below and go to helixsleep.com forward slash jmorell for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress plus two free pillows. Yay!